Hi guys, this is Jake, uh, one of the Sauna Twins. Um, just a quick one to say, unfortunately on this interview, uh, our sound failed. Uh, so we had to rely on the backup sound from the cameras. So just a quick apology that the sound quality isn't what it usually is, um, but hopefully you'll get the gist of it and it's a really fun, enjoyable interview. So uh, without any further ado, here's the Sauna Twins podcast. Welcome back. It's uh, Jake and Max, the Sauna Twins. Um, last time we were on the podcast, we were talking about, uh, with Mika Meskinen from the British Sauna Society, we were talking about um, the Royal Sauna up in, uh, up in um, the Balmoral Estate. And, uh, you know, it's been a while since our last podcast. So um, that's on account of the fact that we've just been released from the Tower of London. Uh, mm -hmm. They managed to catch us on our way in there. Um, but we were released because we uh, we taught Prince Andrew how to sweat again. So um, here we are, we're back, and uh, and and this time we're here with Kimo, the sauna sherpa. Uh, Kimo uh, is um, is uh, uh, a, a guide for for proper Finnish sauna throughout throughout Finland, um, and uh, takes tours. You can find him on his website, which you will get in the link below. And also, um, Kimo will uh, give it to you at the end of the at the end of the podcast. Um, and uh, yeah, Kimo, tell us a little bit about Sauna Sherpa, what it is that you do, and and uh, and what what somebody might look forward to when they when they go on a Sauna Sherpa tour. Okay, first of all, thanks for having me here. Thank Finally, <laughs> it's an honor, a pleasure. Okay, as a Sauna Sherpa, yeah, I do. Sauna tours or sauna trips anywhere in Finland, basically, mostly perhaps in the southern England. And they can be short tours, like in the Helsinki area to meet the public saunas there. We got quite a few, but not that much chance in Tampere or Pirkanma area. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, in the summertime, there's more than 40, 40 public saunas available. Wow. So that's a uh, not going to run out of places to go. Yeah, not so very really sure. <laughs> well, they are, they are really good ones, uh, of course, and not so good ones, but basically they are quite okay. Or yeah. Most are wood burning. Yeah. So, so do, where do people come from to, uh, you know, you must, you've obviously got quite a global reach. A lot of people go to Finland to try salmon. Yeah, this far I've had people from the US, mm -hmm. Canada, Germany, UK, mm -hmm. Sweden. Mm. Any, yeah, Japan. Japan? Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, that's about it, yeah. if I recall right. <laughs> Is, do you find there's much of a difference in how people receive the experience in that, uh, you know, uh, people trying, for a lot of people, and I'm sure you, you know, you can attest to this, that it's, uh, we certainly hear people talking about it like, um, like, um, like a, a, a baptism into sound, like the you know to try the real deal for that first time. You obviously get to see that a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, quite a lot. Do do you see it differently between different people from around the world, or? Um... Mm, I'm not sure if it, if a person is like a rookie. Yeah. Then it's pretty much the same. Same, yeah. I guess. Yeah. It was interesting that um, uh, first time we attended the World Sounder Forum. Uh, you were a uh, guide for um, Rafe, the um, uh, journalist that was used to make. Yeah, he's a freelancer, but he writes to yeah. um, that magazine, and I think to New York Times. New York Times, yeah. 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 But he, he um, I think he had a Finnish family mm -hmm. um, growing no. up. Norwegian. Norwegian, Norwegian. yeah. 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 Um, and so he, he had a uh, sound of culture, actually, you know, grew up around it in the family. There was mm -hmm. a, a sauna in his home growing up. Um, but I think reading his really amazing piece on that whole experience from that week was that even someone with somewhat of a, an exposure to sauna growing up, who still had this kind of baptism of fire moment mm -hmm. into into the world of food yeah, sauna. he he hadn't been to a small sauna before, I think. Yeah, and that was a quite big thing for him. So you know? tell us tell us a little bit about. Um, you know, obviously, um, when people hear smoke sauna, they think of something maybe quite yeah, unpleasant and toxic. But yeah. 
just for the benefit of those that don't know, uh, tell us about what is a smoke sauna and where we yeah, might find one. First of all, some people think that it's hard to breathe the smoke. Yeah. So <laughs> I have to explain them that it's a single heated stove. Yeah. And heat it quite a long, long time. And yeah. there's hatches all the time where the, well, the smoke comes through the rocks mm -hmm. and circulates in the sauna room and gets out of the vents or hatches, if you like. Yeah. And uh, so during that time, there's nobody inside. Nobody. Yeah. yeah. Just a, well, the guy who puts stokes the fire. <laughs> he goes there. Guy. And, yeah. But usually <clears throat> he goes below the smoke level yeah. because it's usually somewhere like a meter or one or half meter from the floor. Okay. So you can do it safely, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Once there's it's up to temperature, um, there's then all the smoke is gone, right? Yeah, it takes quite a long time, depends on the size of the sauna, of course, and the size of the stove, mm -hmm. and from two to eight hours even. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And then the uh, room is ventilated, of course. Mm -hmm. And I think you can call it as an initial load or steam. Mm -hmm. So there's a, quite a lot of water poured on the, on the rocks. Yeah. And that takes out the uh, smoke, and the, there might be some particles in the on the rock still, yeah. and they fly fly off, and then you let the sun stay for an, usually at least an hour. Yeah. So, so that's and called the, the hakalele, is that right? Yeah, that's the hakalele. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. And then once once then after that hour is passed, that's when the users go and use it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's ambiently hot from when it was heated up before. Yeah, the basically the idea is just to heat heat up the stove. Not the building yeah. itself. Well, of course, it heats up the wheel, but you know. And the whole inside of it, completely covered in in ash and in soot. Soot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Although I think sometimes they they clean them down. Is that right? Yeah, you can have a like benches that are in an upright position, and then they turn them down, okay. or or you can wash them or use cloth. Yeah, uh, on the benches and so. They, they have smoke sounders at the Finnish Sauna Society, I think. Yeah, we have four. Four, yeah. yeah. And they were opened by a member of the royal family, weren't they? Yeah, the number six was opened, yeah. Okay, yeah. Who, who opened that one? Ah, uh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope it was Prince Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> can yeah, we find but... out? Can, can you find out? Sauna... The Finnish Sauna Society, mm -hmm. opened by a member of the uh, one of the saunas was opened by a member of the the royal family. Uh, yeah. Mika said it on us last time. Did he? Yeah, it was Prince, uh, not Andrew. My, my knowledge of Edward. Edward. Yeah, I think it was Edward. Could be Edward. Right. Yeah, but they didn't have time to do the sauna. Try it. Right. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's where well, maybe fifteen minutes or something like that. Yeah, that's it. It's <laughs> a shame. I yeah. don't know what they were missing out on. The mm -hmm. Sauna Society is yeah. such a special place. You take people to the Finnish Sauna Society. Yeah, um, I take like, yeah, not really customers, but you know, friends. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And uh, is there any any saunas particularly that you like taking people to, or do you generally, um, you know, do you generally move around different places based on on their preferences uh, or Mm, yeah, I try to figure out the sort of sauna stamina before <laughs> a bit, you know, where, where can I take them. Yeah. And if they're basically okay with, with anything, then I take them to my favorite sauna. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so if, if someone has good sauna stamina, how, what, what would you say uh, of, of people that you've toured, uh, what's the highest number of saunas you've, you've toured in one week or one trip? Um, I think it was with the Swedes. We were at the Tampere area. Oh, yeah. We had a quite a few. Okay. Two to three per day, a couple of days. Wow. Yeah, that was nice. It, it was winter time. We could take hot, cold lunch and yeah. so on. So it was... Like an Avanto in the ice. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. There's some excellent saunas in Tampere. I know they, yeah. One of the oldest, um, well, the oldest public sauna. Yeah, Raya Port. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was opened in 1906. Wow, okay. Yeah. So that one's a little bit different in terms of its interior. So like... Uh, yeah, it has some 
Yeah, it's uh, like an uh, old peasant type. The, you call them mezzanine sound. So, uh, we, we would call them a mezzanine <laughs> sound. Yeah. yeah, so I, I, when I've spoken to people in the past about this, this is, you know, for the benefit of people listening to this, um, a traditional way of building sauna in Finland going back like over a hundred years would be to have a heater at floor level when you walk in that's quite tall with a lot of stones and then to have like a set of stairs up onto a mezzanine level that is uh, the floor level of the mezzanine is just a little bit above the top of the heater and when I say you know most heaters these days sort of vary between um, 600 mil and and 1800 mil high um, these are like six foot tall heat storing cylindrical heaters these mm -hmm. i took us these, these big heat storing sauna heaters um, and the but the closest thing we can call them is mezzanine saunas but some people call them like traditional style or old yeah. style yeah. They are, they are typical to the western part of Finland, okay. where they were connected to the farmhouse. Yeah. Uh, what do you say? Activities, you mm -hmm. know. They they molded in the yes. sauna. Okay. They smoked meat there. Yeah. And dried crops and so on. Okay, great. So that's what they. It's yeah. a bit like a barn, like a. Yeah, um, a bit. Yeah. I'm trying to think what you would you would call it like a tide barn or something like that, where you have two tiers. Yeah, mm. yeah, for drying mm. Mm. upstairs, but I guess and yeah, it's modern incarnation that you still see in uh, in, in Finland um, today. Um, people like uh, the sort of wash area downstairs. Um, yeah, yeah, and mm. sauna upstairs, like yeah. in Lomna, for example. Yeah, Rajaport, yeah. same yeah. same yeah. setup. Yeah. yeah, so Rajaport is uh, quite in contrast to what um, what a lot of people will think about sauna. Uh, there's no cladding. There's no wooden mm -hmm. cladding on the inside. Yeah, it's like a pe is it painted? Like uh, there's chalk on the chalk. Yeah, yeah. Is that is that something traditional? Or is that like uh, unique to to Rajaporti sauna? I think there were quite many saunas in old days. Okay, similar public saunas, but they are gone now. You know. Yeah. There used to be something like one hundred and fifty public saunas in Helsinki. Wow. But then people got the proper bathrooms and mm -hmm. so on, and then eventually those house saunas, yes, apartment right. saunas. Mm -hmm. Let's and see if we can find a picture of uh, Raya Porti sauna. I think it's uh, forgive me. The spelling of that is R A J Raya Raya Porti. Okay, R A J A is it Raya? R A J A P O R T I. T I. Okay. Yeah. There we go. I think I think we've got a picture coming up here. Uh, if we can find one inside, it might, might just be the pictures from outside. I guess it must be difficult. You, you, I don't. I'm, when I've been to Rajaporti in the past, it's not somewhere you would take a camera inside. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had once. Oh, you did. Yeah, but it didn't work after that. Yeah. <laughs> I left it to, you know, you have it, when you take the camera to a sauna, yeah. you have to heat it up a bit so you don't get steamy. Yeah. yeah. But I forgot it uh, yeah. for a little bit long time. <laughs> well, they've not built a sauna camera yet. Yeah, no. yeah. Well, By the way, that's for my cottage, cottage sauna. So the, this is on the wall of your, your yeah. own cottage sauna. Yeah. 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 Cottage. Excellent. Are you quite the uh, collector of uh, old uh, instruments for uh, yeah thermometers? Yeah, yeah. So this is it's very difficult to see in that picture. This is like some sort of. In, I'll tell you what it looks like. It looks like those um, when you see people put a po a picture saying this is proof of ghosts. <laughs> That's what it looks like. It's the steam on the lens, but mm, yeah. you can see there. There's this big heater, and what what I didn't appreciate about this heater is that. It create when you pour water on it, it creates steam for the men's sauna on one side and the ladies' sauna at the same time. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, there's a, there's a top lid. Yeah, which is partly or open or open. open. So more or less open, you know, and depends. I don't know what 
other thing there is that how yeah. open they keep it. Some steam goes there anyway. Yeah. Uh, all I know is that when we were there, we were there with um, uh, Lisa. with Lisa. She was talking about um, you know we were the, the the guys kept pouring water on and that the girls, the ladies on the other side were getting heavily steamed and. Oh, that's a good service. <laughs> they don't have to do it themselves. <laughs> I don't think they wanted <laughs> the level of steam that the guys were putting on. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it, it's almost reminiscent of like a, a banya oven style thing. Mm, that it's, yeah. yeah. The, the stove is built into a wall and you open the, the, the hatch. Mm, mm. Yeah, very similar. Yeah. Huge yeah. ladle. Yeah. yeah. So a banya oven, again, for those who don't know, it's like the Russian equivalent of, of a sauna um, heater, um, which is typically like a... Uh, brick built or soapstone built mm -hmm. um, heater, either wood burning or electric with a mm -hmm. with a hatch on it. Or even gas burning. Uh, or even gas. Yeah. yeah, they have those things like this as well. Mm. Uh, probably in Moscow. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that that's Raya Porty. That's just one of the, the many uh, saunas um, that you take people to on, on these tours. Yeah. Do you have um, for us a top 10 favorite Public saunas in Finland. Yeah. 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 Okay. Raya party is of course one. Is not, that not necessarily the number one. So are you going to give us? You're just going. Are you going to give us a ten down to one of a top ten, or or is it impossible to um, to rank them to rank them in order? Yeah, there's a guy who writes to the Amo. Okay. Lehti. He ranks to all the saunas in Tampere area. Okay. He does regularly, or once in a while, all the sounds keeps on the list, you know, some on, some, some mm -hmm. on goes up and some down and so on. But, you know, as for myself, right, I love the Veitjärvi sauna, that's okay. Ylöjärvi. It's, okay. it's a city next to west from Tampere. Okay. And I think I like it more than Rajapot because they have this nice cold punch okay. or Ravato there. Yeah. Yeah. And how does that look in in comparison to something like Rajapot? Is it more modern? Is it a wooden? Yeah, brand? yeah. Wooden, yeah, panel. Yeah. Okay. They have two saunas. There's a smoke sauna, mm -hmm. which is quite not so usual to find a public smoke sauna, in yeah. the, even in Finland. And then they have this sort of regular sauna where they have. I think it's AK-95, okay. mm -hmm. plus they have a continuously burning, uh, like a self-made heater. Yeah. Okay. And they usually pour water on the, or take load from, from the continuously burning heater. Mm -hmm. But then, as I go one set or brought somewhere, they get this aficionado load from the AK. Yeah, they open the lid. It's special. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it is a different steam, isn't it? I think. Yeah, uh, it's what it, it's something we struggle to sort of explain and quantify um, to people. The kind of, you know, uh, we often find ourselves trying to explain the difference between an electric heater steam, a wood burning heater steam, and like a heat storing sauna steam, and then like a smoke sauna. Mm -hmm. And it's like each time is an improving level of load, a level of steam, and it's softer and yeah, or mellow, you might, you might mellow, say mellow, yeah, more mellow steam, less mm -hmm. aggressive or harsh. Um, mm -hmm. We were mm -hmm. talking earlier about the um, uh, because um, the the heat storing uh, uh, sauna heaters and um, sabu saunas are kind of unique because the fire is only on. Whilst mm. you heat up the stones, it's not continuously yeah. burning. So, the for example, with a lot of these heaters, the stones you can get glowing red before uh, you actually use the sauna. Mm. Um, and so, as you use that um, sauna for in the instance of like a Finnish sauna society, the the, the stones are hot throughout the, the entire day. Um, but then, obviously, the the stones must cool down and um, and maybe the lowly changes. So I was, I was wondering, what what do you think um, uh, the characteristics of the lowly is like uh, throughout the course of a day for for like um, a, a heat storing heat storing sauna or a, a sauna? 
Yeah, of course, it's it's a bit sharper at the moment, at the beginning, beginning. beginning yeah, yeah. And yeah, eventually the stove cools down, and so it comes more slowly, and the sauna gets more moist or, mm -hmm. or humid. Mm -hmm. So maybe the best time could be there in, in the middle somewhere. <laughs> Or then what we, me and my few of my friends, whom we I traveled to Russia and in in Finland and Baltics, we call it the prime time, perhaps when prime time. All, all the other guys have gone. Yeah. So we just don't throw any loads anymore. So the okay. sun has cooled down. Yeah. And we can we might chat there for like. One hour, like you said. Yeah, yeah. It's not too hot, hot anymore, and, and it's really relaxing. And maybe lay down there and so on. Yeah. Once we were in, and yeah, we were in Moscow. That's one of my favorite saunas in in Borima, in Estonia. Mm -hmm. And we had a eight hour sauna session there. Wow. Yeah. That's... Had a little snack and drinks, of course, in the middle, and they had a little pond to dip in and so on, so it yeah. was quite a session. Was, yeah, eight hours is a long time. It's, oh. Yeah, it's funny, at some point, you know, you don't want to stop anymore. Yeah. You have to, like, <laughs> rip yourself out of the sauna. Yeah, I remember, <laughs> say it. I remember the, um, the first time we met, um, you were taking uh, me around the saunas in Helsinki, and... Uh, <laughs> And in the evening, I was picking somebody up, and I had like two hours to to drive. And uh, I, you were sort of warning me that, like, you know, having a day of sauna and then driving is like akin to drink driving. In that, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you shouldn't operate heavy machinery after you've had a, a yeah. Sauna. You're so relaxed. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I think that's quite right. I think you know, uh, by the end of a day, even just after a few sauna sessions. You're so ready for sleep. Mm. Uh, it's, mm. Yeah, you don't want to be night driving. Yeah, sometimes when I visit the guys, for example, at the Rajapatti sauna, because I know a lot, lot of guys there, mm -hmm. and I'm also a lifetime member at this Ispala sauna yeah. society. And I I like to take the train if I, I'm during the evening in the sauna. I don't want to drive back. Yeah. I was thinking less for after, after a long session. Yeah, you just got to make sure that you don't fall asleep on the train and wake up in St. Petersburg. That's a different <laughs> train, luckily. Yeah. Excellent. So and you can have a few beers. They have a nice bar also. Yeah, the right they do. They do. Yeah, or cafe bar. Mm -hmm. That's actually something really interesting. We were speaking with a, um, a Finnish lady uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. and I think she was, she was talking about how uh, in the UK people associate sauna a lot with um with sports gyms mm. and sports and mm. working out you do it afterwards for recovery but in finland she said it's really nothing like that and it's so common to find somewhere that has a good bar attached to, mm. to public sauna um so i was just wondering whether on your on your tours um whether the people that you're um, giving the tours to, whether they have a similar kind of um, realization that sauna is 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 not a uh, necessarily for for sports and more so for leisure um, and drinking, of course. <laughs> well, we don't drink that much in the sauna. Maybe yeah. a few beers or so. Mm -hmm. mm, I'm not sure, quite sure what it meant, but. I, I, I think uh, yeah, uh, uh, what she was saying is in the UK, a lot of people will go to the gym and then afterwards they will like administer 10 minutes of, of self-inflicted sauna pain where they're like, uh, it has to be really hot, really dry. And it has to feel like, um, it has to feel like uh, uh, it, uh, in the same way that, you know, when somebody's doing sport, they say no no pain, no gain. You know, you mm. have to push really hard mm. until you feel mm. the burn. And I think it's kind of sauna is treated in the same way that 
you know, after your gym workout, you go into the sauna and then you, again, no pain, no gain. So you have to force yourself to be in there in, in, in discomfort. Whereas in Finland, <laughs> it's like you go there to relax for like yeah, an enjoy. hour, hour and a half. You mm -hmm. enjoy, maybe you have something nice to eat, um, mm -hmm. uh, a few beers. And, you know, it's not associated with uh, like that kind of, um, that kind of, it's more about wellness than about physical exertion. Yeah, yeah, and even mindfulness. Yeah, sort of thing, you know. Yeah, you you forget about everything else basically. Yeah, you, know, you don't think. Yeah, you don't think about like work or other. Yeah, negative stuff there. Yeah, it's impossible to to have that, those negative thoughts. I think in the mm -hmm. sauna. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it's something that's so poignant these days because uh, uh, people talk about mental health being such a big issue, societal issue, not just here in the UK, mm. but throughout the Western world. And I think it's, you know, it's this little known secret that if you do a sauna right, that you, you know, you get um, you get that that high from it and you mm. get that positive feeling from it that, yeah i call it legal high. yeah <laughs> the, the performance enhancing drug that is legal yeah. Yeah, yeah so um we actually we recently um you know the health benefits section of our website we did um uh, a section on the mental health and socialization benefits um and there's a surprising number of um academic uh reports and literature that um uh has been put together on the on those health benefits so um, worth checking out there as you can see um, there's uh, a lot of uh, a lot of Laukanen on the on the, yeah. the references <laughs> mm. <laughs> so yeah. we were talking through a top 10 so we got number one okay Bediarvos yeah Bediarvi yeah well of course I love the Finnish sauna saunas in, in Vaskin yeah yeah so that's the Finnish sauna society they have four smoke saunas there. Mm. They have one constantly fueled wood burning sauna. Am I right? No, no they've no. got rid of that. There's, no, there's no, one. There's, there's one electric sauna. Even, okay, there's an electric and sauna. two heat storing sauna. Okay, and four smoke sauna. And now a trailer. A trailer, yeah. Yeah, that that was really good. Yeah, it was very popular during the summer. It, it was on the edge of the on the, house there, and, yeah. and it was. Packed all the really? time. Yeah. So and that was by the guys at Savos. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. And it had all the dimensions, right? You know, the best yeah. levels and so on. So it was actually very good. This is something uh, you mentioned bench, talking about the bench levels being right. So um, uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, what you mean by that, the bench levels being right. And uh, yeah, of, yeah. In Finland, uh, there's this guy, he was a writer and research of the, uh, um, I find the word now, but old culture of Finland, mm -hmm. sort of, um, called Sakari Pälsi, and he introduced this law of Löwe, Löwe Okay. So one, one thing that... Uh, the law of Löwe. Yeah, that's... How should I say? So yeah, one, one thing of, in the law of Lowly is that where you have the rock level, yeah, top rock level, there's a rock should, on the stove, on the stove. On yeah, the stove. yeah, you should have the feet bench level above, yeah, so your feet keep keep warm. Yeah, so the the the, the lower bench in the sauna should be as close to, if not above, the top edge of the heater, if possible. Yeah, the feet feet bench level. Yeah, yeah. And that usually requires that you have at least three tiers in the, yes. in the benches. Yeah. And that, that was just right in, in that mobile cell. Mm, excellent. Yeah, and I talked most it about it for the wood burning sauna guys in the US. And it's the best mobile sauna in the universe. Yeah. They own it that one bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> So you making reference? I, to I made it American way, but they didn't like. It. Yeah, you're making reference <laughs> to, to to the wood burning sauna um, group on Facebook. Yeah, right? yeah, Facebook. Yeah, which has quite a large, active um, 
uh, North American community. Yeah, yeah. So the East Coast, in the yeah. Yes, sort of area. Yeah. Yeah. And their sort of sauna culture is, is, is quite distinct in many ways to, um, to, to Finnish sauna, even though a lot of the people there may be of Finnish descendants. Yeah, um, yeah. Very, uh, yeah. There were lots of people that moved there in, into that area. Mm -hmm. They were miners and loggers, mm -hmm. and of course when they went there, as, as they always, when the Finns go somewhere, and they build a sauna first. Yeah. So that's how they got this culture there, and it's well, it's sort of deteriorated a bit. <laughs> the guys use barrel saunas nowadays, and yeah. they hardly have any smoke saunas anymore, mm -hmm. and so on, just in, in museums and yeah. so on. And how so, um, how, how do you think their experience differs from you know, in the north in the North American kind of wood burnings? sauna culture from from what you might do in Finland, let's say. Mm, yeah, um, how should I describe? Well, the saunas are really small. Okay. They're usually barrel saunas or, or these, as I call them, lawnmower huts. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they just can have two bench levels, maybe. Yeah. And quite weird stoves. Yeah. And, like sauna stoves at all, perhaps they're yeah, just like some kind of fireplaces where they might put put a few rocks on and yeah, like a like a pioneer wood burning stove with a couple of yeah pebbles on the top. But of, of course, there's also good saunas. Yeah, few guys have a, have it right. Mm -hmm. There's yeah, one guy was in Finland and he built a really nice smoke sauna there. Brilliant. Yeah, that's great, and it's quite interesting. The architecture is also quite interesting. Yeah, how so? Uh, it's heated from the downstairs, mm -hmm. and I'm, I haven't seen very many pictures from the interior, but it okay. looks really interesting. Uh, so the stove, if I get it got it right, the stove is very low. Yeah, it's not much above the floor level of the the sauna space where you where you. Sweat. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So um, going back, so we're still on our, we're still working our way through our top ten list at the moment. Yeah, I was about to tell you. Yeah, there's a couple of my favorites at the Finnish Sauna Society. Yeah. The, the number five. Yes. Which is a, again the Western Finnish style. Yes. Smoke sauna, mm -hmm. where they climb up to the to the benches. Yeah. So so you're well well above the rock level. Yes. Yeah. Maybe a meter or so. Yeah. That's nice. And it's it's relatively hot. But then there's this number three, which is the hottest one. Okay. How hot does that get? Uh when we open up the sun house it might be one thirty. Hundred and thirty degrees Celsius. Yeah. Wow. But I I might not go there no. at that point. You cook a chicken in there. <laughs> yeah. But it's nice, you know, after we had had a, quite a many rounds, then I usually go there and have two or three rounds there. Yeah. Sort of to more or less end, end the sound session. Yeah. Excellent. And it's, it's nice. Yeah. You can't throw much water on a stove that hot though, can you? Mm, some people can. Yeah. Some people can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's these like crazy guys that are. They come there at um, when the when the house opens, you know, yeah. and it's hot enough for, mm -hmm. for them, and they throw really quite a lot of flares. Yeah, and it's impossible to stay with them in the sun. I'm always diving for the sea before I feel hot enough in my you know my core. Yeah, it's just to soothe the burns on my shoulders. Or that's mm. a shame in some of the saunas where it's it's really too hot and they put a lot of water on. Mm -hmm. I find, like Max is saying, that you know the thing that I like when you go to cold plunge is when you feel like your core temperature is like almost too hot. Mm -hmm. But if you go in a sauna that is really feels too hot on the outside, you can never stay long enough to get your core temperature up. Mm -hmm. So you just end up going in the cold water, like to soothe your 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 skull. Skin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think it, you know you have to kind of. For me, at least, mm. I prefer something a bit, you know, eighty-five, 
mm. with a lot more humidity mm. than something 130. Mm, yeah, but I depends on the person, you know. Yeah, somebody, some person sort of build up the Tolerance. stamina or throttle. Yeah, they just so these old they guys. need need the yeah. There's even quite young guys. Yeah, yeah, those that attended the Hain, the world famous Hainala competition. Yeah, which was a stupid occasion, but yeah. you know. So that was, Luckily, it stopped. <laughs> yeah, that was the uh, sauna championships that they held, yeah. where um, where uh, uh, somebody died as a result of staying in the sauna yeah, too the, long. The Russian unfortunately, guy. yeah, the Russian guy died. Yeah, and the Finnish guy got badly scolded. Yeah, he had to spend six months in the hospital, so. and he can't take sauna anymore because he's. Skin, the skin is so damaged. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, there's always somebody that takes something to its extreme and. Yeah, over the top. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we were talking about um, uh, uh, the Finnish Sound Society of Baskinia. Uh, um, obviously, you've got two of your favorite sounders, but earlier we were chatting about um, the, the snacks and the drink side of things with sounders, so eating and all, it's all. Part of the ledger experience, um, how would you say the canteen at the Finnish Sauna Society ranks uh, in terms of your favorite saunas? Yeah, it's pretty good here. They have this salty hmm. snacks there, on, on sandwiches and so on. Of course, sausage is quite a big thing in Finland. We have sausages and Always, like I guess every day is this nice salmon soup there. Oh yeah, it's it's very popular there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's very good. Yeah, I remember um, when I got the the privilege of going there, the lasting memory of the salmon, smoked salmon there is really good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, even better after a sauna. The the hunger that you get that, you know. You can't, I, again, it's hard to explain to somebody who doesn't know what, what I'm talking about, but the hunger, obviously you're thirsty, but the hunger that you get and the sort of level of tiredness, but it's a good tiredness mm. that you feel afterwards. Mm. And yeah, I think the combination of good sauna and the availability of good food is really, um, you know, is really an important aspect of the whole experience, Yeah, much in a way that... You know, for me, I really love um, cold plunge with my my sauna. So going mm. for a full cold immersion after the sauna, and uh, uh, I think the research coming out about the health benefits says, you know, you combine the sauna with a cold plunge is like is, is where the good, the real goodness is at. You know, mm. it's the real um, beneficial, healthy um, uh, aspect of the the experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a shame. I think Raya Porti they don't have. Yeah, that's the only. Yeah. Sort of flaw in in that place. Yeah. And that's why it's not ranked at the, at top, the top by the by the Amore. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So we've got through sauna three and five at the Finnish sauna society yeah. as well. So we're still in the top five. So the next mm. one is number five. Uh, yeah, number, number five, five in Kimo's r- ranking of the best Finnish sauna. <laughs> okay, one one is in the. Central part part of Finland. Mm-hmm. It's two hundred years old smoke sauna. Wow! At the little village, it's called Hattula sauna. Hattula sauna. Yeah. Okay. It's a real classic, you know. They had this. Uh, the stove is just made of you know rocks. Yes. There's no like binding materials between them, so okay. so it's like a dry stone wall. You know, like a dry stone. No, it's like a pile of rocks, basically. Okay. Yeah. Do, you, do you sort of stack them in a way that there's space to light the fire? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to know how to do it. You know. mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And how many sort of how many people can go there? Is it by a lake? How does, how yeah, does well, it's not by a lake, but okay. so the building is so nice and yeah, you can see that. It's been been around a long while. Let's see if we can get a, a picture of that. How, how do we spell that? Hattula. I'm not sure if you can find a picture. Oh, this is proper <laughs> off grid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what would that be? H A T T U L A. 
A-H-A-E-T-U-L-A. Yeah, Hustle. Let's see if we can get Robbie to get get something up on the screen here. Let's see. I must say, I, it's something I miss here in the UK is a, is a good smoke sauna. Uh, mm. uh, we're aware of people that are planning to build their own or are in progress of building their own. I think you know who we're talking about here as well. Um, but I haven't had any updates. So I don't know mm. where they are with that. It's something that, again, there's so much fear about, about smoke saunas, about smoke. You know that people think that they might. You know, what's the idea of going somewhere that mm -hmm. you've been breathing smoke? And also, you know, there's that old Finnish adage that there is two types of smoke sauna: those that have burnt down and those that have not yet burnt down, mm -hmm. but soon will. Um, so I guess there's a little bit of fear aspect, and yeah, um, not enough uh, people know about it. Yeah, I'm also a member of the. Uh, International Smoke Sauna Club. Wow. <laughs> how, how big is the membership? No, it's not much. Like <laughs> 20, 25 euros. Or okay. Something. Yeah. No, how, how many people is the, in the membership? Mm, I'm not quite sure. Maybe hundreds feet. of people? No. Okay. Max 100, I guess. Maximum 100. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So yeah, but the there's uh, this, this core group that evaluate smoke saunas mm -hmm. so they they have a like excel with i guess 200 points how to evaluate the smoke sauna yeah and the safety aspect is very crucial yeah so if you follow their rules it won't burn and out. learn how to how to heat it up there's no danger at all okay yeah so there's there's a there is a lot of saunas in finland so there's uh, five and a half million Finns, two and a half million sound instances. Like yeah, that. that's estimate. the estimate. Some people, I've heard the figure of three million. Yeah. Right. No one really knows. No. Yeah. What if you if you had to guess what what kind of proportion would you say savvy sounders are the smoke sounders? Seeing as it, it's such a niche thing. Yeah, it's hard to say the count. Yeah. Probably quite but, a lot less because if you think the yeah, yeah, majority yeah. of those millions are. People's electric saunas in their home, their wood burning saunas in their summer cottages. Yeah, sure. So mm -hmm. that accounts for two of them, and I think. Of course, we have saunas in, in each hotel and gym and, yeah. and so on. Yeah, in the public. But ones. there's a little revival of smoke saunas. People like to yeah. have them because it's the it's the best. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So have we? Did we manage to find any pictures, or is it? It is fully off grid. Yeah, we couldn't see. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. So, if you want to go and see something that <laughs> is too exclusive, even for the internet, <laughs> the sauna show will take you to. That was sauna number five in the top five. But, okay. Um, so, on to the next five. The, um, you know, the close to the top, but not quite your uh, your favourite. Um, mm -hmm. Let me say the... Are there any particularly that you like to take groups of people to that you would consider, um, you know, um, and there's quite, your top five there excludes a lot of the more famous uh, public saunas. Um, are there any sort of well-known um, uh, uh, in the press saunas that, that would make your top ten? Yeah, I would like to take people, of course, to the Kotihari sauna in in Helsinki, it's, it's a classic one that survived, and it, it was opened in 1928. Wow, okay. And it's kept as it as it was. In, it's renovated, but nothing nothing's changed. Yeah, but that's a good one. Yeah, and I kind of well, I I could get back to the as you asked about the sauna snacks or sauna food. Uh, it's well, it's a uh, New public sauna in Helsinki called Uusi Sauna, mm. and it's a they have a sauna room for ladies and sauna room for men, but there's a bar and restaurant where these both genders can mingle. Yeah, and they have nice beers and nice food, so that's a 
it's a convenient place to take people to go. Do people go there to the bar area in their towels, or yeah, 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 yeah. okay, yeah. So they go from the sauna and then re into the restaurant, like straight as if they were they were going to go back in and go bathing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. No chai. Yeah. No chai. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. You have to invent the sauna chai. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so that's Usi, Usi from the Finnish new sauna, right? Yeah, it's yeah. translated, yeah. it's new sauna. Okay. And it's uh, also uh, designed sort of by the Kimmo Helister, who is the quite famous sauna guy in Helsinki. He, yeah. He's, he, has, he has been running the sauna Arla, which is quite nice, okay. public sauna also in Helsinki. Yeah. It was opened in 1929. Wow. It's a bit smaller, but you know, you go back back to th that time when you <laughs> enter the place. Yeah. yeah. So, so you find those saunas that are like um, living museums almost. Yeah. 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 They don't want to change anything because yeah. it would ruin the, the, ruin the place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Are there any sort of the more modernistic? Obviously, Usi is a new sauna. Yeah, that's the. Uh, that's it's like the public sauna upgraded to, to this time. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's very good, you know. They have nice stoves, they have pellet stoves. Okay. So they're like wood pellets. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there's practically no smoke coming out of the chimney. Mm -hmm. We can still have those in like in the middle of Helsinki. Yeah. Yeah. That's not prohibited. Yeah, uh, as it's in London area, you can't have any smokeless. Wood yeah, smokeless yeah. zones. So there are a number of uh, wood burning heaters that actually would be safe in a smokeless zone. The mm. difficulty is getting um, getting the manufacturers to do the tests uh, mm. that are required on them. Mm. So in the UK, we have the, uh, the Department for Environment, Farming, and Rural Affairs (DEFRA). They're called, mm -hmm. and they're the ones that. Um, uh, Test and and ensure that uh, stoves are safe to be uh, uh, to be considered smokeless zone stoves. Mm -hmm. um, the the difficulty is that uh, there are only a few producers of wood burning sauna heaters that are very very efficient. There is one company a company that we work with that um, has passed the German Beamsch test. Oh, that's tight. Yeah, it's yeah. the tightest smoke regulation yeah, it, in, it, in Europe. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, 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 above, it's above the EU standard. It, it is above yeah, the yeah. EU standard. So yeah. anybody anybody who's lived in Germany or, or, or tried to install a wood-burning heater of any kind in Germany will know just how difficult that is to do um, and how strict their regulations are. Mm -hmm. But not only did it pass it, it was the best. It, yeah, the best in class. So we've been chasing them to try and get them to to get themselves certified here in the UK. Um, I'm trying to convince them that there's enough demand in in uh, the cities here in the UK. Um, okay. So I think. Yeah. And what is the brand then? Well, that would ah. be that would be telling. Uh, so um, the company that passed the Beamsh test that's that's Narvi. Mm -hmm. um, so there is a couple of their models uh, that passed with flying colors. The, um, the most efficient model they produce would be the Aitokiwa. So we've talked about these before in previous podcasts. Mm -hmm. um, we've even mentioned it a few times in this. That's because of the heat storing sauna. They get up to such a high temperature that the burn is very, very clean. Mm -hmm. um, and all of the flue gases, rather than it uh, heating the stones via conduction through the metal of the stove, the flue gases go through the stones. So mm. you get much better heat transfer onto mm. the onto the stone mass or, or, or ceramic yeah. stones or whatever you have in there. And so the efficiency of the burn itself is also mm -hmm. very uh, efficient. Um, and then they also have some constantly burning wood stoves as well. And the way that they route their flue systems uh, gives good contact with the stones and, and again burns quite cleanly. I'm sh certain there are other smaller brands. In fact, I know a few in Finland mm -hmm. that have that boast very, very 
clean burn, a very efficient burn. I know you have one in your summer cottage, which uh, yeah. which is particularly uh, clean burning. But obviously, they tend to be much smaller niche suppliers, so yeah, it's, it's harder yeah, to get small them. supply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. much harder to get hold of those kind of yeah. stoves. But I think now that the soon in, introduced the uh, pellet burning, well, I hope like so. a smaller yeah. stove. Yeah. The ones we have now, they are really like for the big sound. Yeah. And I guess that Norwich model would be like continuously in yeah. a pellet yeah. stove. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll get in trouble. They had, at well least I know they have a pro secret. prototype of that. Yeah, yeah, excellent. I guess you know that too. Well, <laughs> yeah, a little bit of insider information. We'll probably get in trouble. So, um, so yeah, going back to the list, okay. I mean, keep coming back to this list in part because I want to try Kimo's top 10 sound myself. So, <laughs> uh, we'll publish a list at the bottom for anybody who who gets lost in, in the podcast and, and, and wants to refer to it. And similarly, you know, just in terms of making sure that we get the spellings of those and things like that so that people can people can follow your list if they want to. Of mm. course, we would strongly recommend, you know, that they take a guide with them to, mm -hmm. uh, mm. to go and try these. Um, so so we talked about Usi, number six, Usi, mm. Sauna. If we got the seven... Yeah, I think, well, the order might be a little oh, okay. and mixed, blurred. but then, yeah, all the, the, uh, okay. yeah, but also the Kusiarvi. Kusiarvi. Yeah, that's in Vanta, it's like a half an hour from Vanta, Helsinki. Yeah, so that's just a little bit east of the airport when you fly yeah, into quite close. Helsinki. Yeah, yeah. You, you're very close to, to mm -hmm. like Kusiarvi. Yeah. They have several saunas there. They have three. Three and, saunas. And it's one of the rare places where the, there are like public smoke saunas. Yeah. They have two small ones and one big one. And they're all really good. Are yeah. they on every day? Or Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you really needed to get your smoke sauna fix, and you were, you were in London, you could get fly to, to Vanta. Vanta. Fly to Vanta. And then mm -hmm. from from Vanta to Kusiarvi in... Yeah. Half an hour? Less than that. It's 15 it's really minutes. Close, yeah, it? it's half an hour from downtown Helsinki. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's much really less close. from the airport. Yeah. So you can get, uh, <coughs> you know, you can get off the plane and be in Kusi and, you know. In, yeah, just a day trip. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I imagine. I don't know how many weekends you could do that for. But, um, I've been to um, Helsinki on a Sunday. Uh, Sunday morning, particularly difficult to get a good sauna. It seems that public saunas, they're more of an afternoon thing, right? Because they spend the yeah. morning heating up. Yeah, that's what quite many people don't realize. Mm. Because they are opening at one o'clock or two o'clock. So. Yeah, so most public saunas open from 2 p.m. until... What time do nine or nine? ten? Yeah, or is on even till eleven o'clock? Right. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Is that every day or? No, they have uh, on Mondays. They oh, I didn't mention they have one electric sun also. Okay. Which you can book for so some kind of company or meeting. Or yeah. So that's open on Mondays. Okay. And the the rest of the time. Yeah, they public. They, they rest those rest of time. Yeah, <laughs> those are those two ones. Yeah, but it's it's free on Mondays. Oh, it, it's okay. co-ed. Yeah. So yeah. co-ed meaning that both genders can yeah be, yeah can space together. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. I think you're recommended to have a bathing suit, but I'm not quite sure about that. Yeah. Uh, so um, I mean, something to touch on there, you know, is obviously in public saunas. I think a lot of Brits uh, not sure what to expect when they go to sauna in mm. in Finland. Um, unlike the German sauna culture, which has an enforced nudity, mm -hmm. uh, my experience of Finnish public saunas is that where it's mixed gender, then everybody wears a swimming costume or or you know yeah. covers themselves essentially, and when it's single gendered, male only or female only, mm. then it tends to be uh, a nude. Affair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more pleasant to be nude in the sun. Yeah. But you know, you can wear 
swimsuit or, or towel or whatever yeah. to cover yourself uh, in any any public sauna. Yeah. yeah. There's no enforced rules. No. Like, there's no. In Germany, they would have a sauna master yelling at you to yeah. take your clothes off <laughs> if you come inside. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've been guilty of that before. <laughs> yeah. Traumatic, getting shouted at in front of a group of naked Germans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so let's let's try and round off your top ten. Okay, that's a tough one. Yeah. So we've we've had a, f- a smattering across across Finland. A few in Helsinki. I think only one in Tampere, which Tampere is obviously the sound like capital, well, as they call well, it. Well, basically. You can say that the Veitiar is in Tampere. Veitiar, I mean, it's, well. so, it's so close. Okay. So we, a couple in Tampere. Yeah. Are there any uh, further north up to Lapland or any um, any around any other sort of cities that, that you particularly like? Or mm. is Helsinki and Tampere your two hot spots? Yeah, they are. Yeah. I've been to Lapland in Ulvas, they have really a nice smoke sauna. Mm-hmm. But it's it's not public, you know, you have, have to book, book it, it and mm-hmm. so it's, it's, it's quite it's quite expensive, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've heard um from my experience trying to book a smoke sauna for a group is a, is actually very expensive. Mm, yeah. Um, I don't know what you would expect to pay, uh but several hundred euros for uh a session at yeah, least. usually it's what did I say two hundred. Yeah, three hundred varies a bit. Yeah, but I I guess I have to add one sauna to my list. Yeah, you know, okay. which I have been never been to. Okay, <laughs> because it has been on the number one spot in the Armoletti ranking. Okay, every time. Yeah, yeah. And which is that? That is a. Uh, Kauttua in Hämeenkyrä. It's also in quite near, well, I guess 30 minutes from Tampere. Okay. But anyway, it's in that ranking. Yeah. Because there's this area called Pirkanmaa, which is the, around Tampere. Yeah. So they count those saunas into the sort of sauna capital yeah. list. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So why is it in your top? Uh, ten, if you've not been, just because it's because because when I know the res there's a light and then the guy who keeps to keeps the rank doing that rank, yeah. you know, I totally trust to him. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, there's a map up on the screen of of pins of all the public saunas in Finland, and as you can see, uh, you yeah, can okay. almost not see Finland on the Google map. There, I'm not sure that's not the truth actually. Yeah, and you think that's. <laughs> Yeah, there's too many in the <laughs> in Lapland for it. <laughs> yeah. Where where have we got that from? That's just is that that's on brilliant maps. Brilliant oh, maps. All the public saunas in Finland. There you go. You heard it here first. That map is a lie. <laughs> there's a lot in Ireland there as well, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, now I got one one more. Yeah, uh, that's a Herran Kukkaro in Nantali. Nantali. So we, we went to Nantali. It's the it's the booming world is there, right? Oh you went just there. No, we didn't go there. <laughs> <laughs> we stayed there by the coast. Okay. But we were right next door to the Moomin land. Yeah, yeah. That was okay. you know it didn't look like my kind of place, but it was. Mm, uh, yeah. We could have gone. We could have spent a day with the Moomins, but we didn't. <laughs> yeah. So we missed out by the sounds of it on a top ten chemo sound. <laughs> yeah, Herakukka is a bit outside Tampere, mm. almost in the archipelago. Okay. And they have a huge smoke smoke sauna there. Okay. You, maybe for fifty persons and so. Yeah. Wow. And it's a sort of little pressure. They have quite interesting huts and even the tree huts to stay in yeah. for the night and so on. And very good cuisine also. Yeah. Of course, lots of fish in different forms and so on. Excellent. And you can even take a steamboat from Turku. Yes. To Serra Kukka Resort. Okay. Sort of, yeah. Wow. 
I know what I'm doing next time. <laughs> yeah. Dovko is kind of like the old capital. Yeah. Yeah. And I was surprised that that didn't yeah. seem to be when I was I was in Turku and I was looking for um, public saunas. Mm, there yeah. doesn't seem to be so many. Yeah, there's there's I think there's just one, just and one. it's all open only on Friday. Yeah. Uh, and why do you think well, that is? actually, there's another one. It's a winter swimming club. Okay. But I think it's of of course by the sea, but yeah, a little bit outside of Turku. I've never been there, but I guess that's about it. So why so few in Turku, do you think? I don't have any idea. <laughs> Too many Swedes. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't have bastards <laughs> no. either. either. Yeah. <laughs> so great. Okay, well, I think that pretty much rounds onto the top ten. Um, are there any notable, notable exceptions, ones that are particularly quirky? I mean, we always... Um, we always write about the weird and wonderful um, saunas of Finland. You know, they they have now sauna in Burger King in Helsinki. They have a sauna in um, the Big Wheel uh, in Helsinki as well, mm-hmm. in, the, in the Helsinki's version of the London Eye. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So uh, a little bit smaller, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> so, are there any um, any Quirky saunas like that. Novelty yeah. saunas. Yeah, novelty yeah. saunas. Yeah, there's one in Lapland. It's yeah. uh, on the ski lift. One, okay. of, one of those cabins is a sauna. Yeah. Like, have you tried it? No, oh. it's very uh, expensive. Yeah. yeah. But they are, in a way, they it's a quite nice setup. They have also sauna on the upper station of the gondola. Yeah. So you can take around with the sauna and then. Continuing in the sauna that's in outer space, but still, yeah, so expensive. Eh? Well, of course, the sauna is a bit like the gondola sauna, it's a curiosity. It's, yeah. I reckon, it can't be very good. Yeah, I've, s- I've seen recently as well a um, uh, sort of a Finnish TV series where they're like interviewing people with quirky saunas and like people have made saunas inside of. Aeroplanes and oh, that was rad. There was an aeroplane mm. uh, telephone box. Yeah, I'm yeah. Trying to think what other weird and wonderful things that they have, like inside yeah. old cars, like a ladder or yeah. something. Yeah. Talking yeah. of ladders, is uh, one of the defining characteristics of sauna Sherpa is everywhere you go is in a beautiful blue ladder Riva. Niva. 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 Yeah, yeah. that's true. Expedition car, the four by four. Uh, yeah, <laughs> is that is that so you can get to some of the the um, less accessible saunas? The yeah, we went, did a really nice trip with this Mika Meskonen and Yusiniema, my friends, both are members at the Finnish Sauna Society, and we went up to the White Karelia or Vienna Karelia, as it's in, in Finnish too. To explore smoke sauna. Yeah, so here we go. This isn't your one, is it? Nope. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right but, it. but same color. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's it. It looks like yeah. Whenever we see that, we know that Kimo is already Kimo's a sauna. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so you went up to White Karelia. So this is just over the Russian border mm-hmm. into into Russia on the on the eastern side of Finland. Yeah, you have it. And you have to travel like mid mid Finland, and then then you call cross the border to Kostomos, mm-hmm. and <clears throat> and it's the area of Kalevala mm-hmm. where the Finnish folklore or what do you say this book is called? It's called Kalevala, but you know, like yeah, like um, fairy tales or, or yeah, 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 a bit like the Brothers Grimm in in, in German. Mm, yeah, I guess a bit the same. Yeah. I should know the term for that in English, but so so you went over there to try out some Russian banyas. Uh, we were looking for smoke saunas. Okay, and we did find a few. Yeah, people, but people have turned to smoke saunas. What what they call like um, mustakyly. Okay which is uh, like a black sauna. Uh-huh. They have turned them to white sauna, so... Okay. Yeah. How so? Just by... Well, it, after all, the smoke sauna, it's a bit more troublesome to heat it up, yeah. you know, and I guess they have enough activities to survive at, the, at that area. 
<laughs> so they, they want to go easy with the song. Yeah. Because it's a sort of... Rural. Yeah, very rural. You know, you turn back the calendar like 80 years when really? you go there. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Mm. And a lot of the people uh, ethnically were for some time Finnish as well. Yeah, yeah. So for people not familiar with uh, the Finnish history that... Uh, Karelia was was um, a very much a, a part, a region of Finland, and after was it after the Winter War that uh, no. mm, Second World War. After the Second World yeah, War, yeah, we had to was it, give it to Russians so. to keep them mm. to appease the Russians. Mm, yeah. So, so I suppose a lot of the people there as well are Finnic. You know, you Ugric people and, and Finnish speaking. Yeah, right? they they speak this Karelian uh, dialect. Okay. So if you won't find an older person, you can basically talk with him and uh, pretty much understand each other. Yeah. Uh, like oldie worldy kind of. Yeah. Language. And we made an ad hoc decision on the on the last day. We decided to stay at the Yusku Yarvi. Mm-hmm. And we, did, we didn't have any accommodation, so we just had to find some older person to yeah. talk with. Yeah. But after that, it was very easy. Excellent. It was about 15 minutes, and we had the accommodation and the sauna, of course. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. That's great. So how, how did you find that, that kind of um, uh, banya, smoke sauna culture exists? there in Russia, is it, do you find sort of smoke banyas as well, is that, is that commonplace or, um, I must say that that's side of the experience I'm Yeah, thinking. in Russia they call them ba- black banya. Black banya, yeah. okay. I'm not sure if they use the smoke. Yeah, okay. That might be, but you know, usually I have just a black banya. Yeah. That's the first time I've heard it referred to as white sauna and, and black sauna yeah. in terms of, you know, whether there's the soot from, from the smoke sauna. That, that's quite cool. Mm-hmm. It's also interesting that um, the, some of that uh, elements of, as you say, black banya is, uh, and some of the savvy sauna elements are spilled over into Russian banya um, in places as well. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So going back to your tours, I must ask this question. Which countries of the people, you know, you get people from all over the world that come and, and visit you and, and take your tours. Um, and you talked about gauging their, um, their um, sauna endurance. Mm-hmm. Which countries have the best sauna endurance, other than Finns, of course, in your experience? And of course, I have to ask, which countries have the worst? <laughs> <laughs> Hard to say which one is the worst because sauna culture is not spread to yeah all over the globe. But you know the I guess the best ones. Well, in Japan there it's very popular. The Finnish sauna is booming there. Yeah. So those guys that come to Finland, they are really they are just like Finns yeah. actually, you know. They don't care. They're new, then it's... <laughs> they just go for it. Yeah, they just go for it. And of course, Germans, there's a lot of sauna culture. Yeah. They uh, have, uh, in Japan, obviously, they have onsen, which is different. It's a hot bathing culture. Yeah, that's like a swimming pool with hot water. Yeah. And I think it usually comes from the ground, so it's... Thermal pool. Min- and mineral mm-hmm. water, so so to say. Excellent. Great. So you think it's, it's do you, what do you think sort of in, encouraging this boom in, in Finnish sauna in Japan? Because you're right, it seems to be uh, really big in Japan at the moment. There's a lot of a lot of people interested in, in Finnish sauna. Yeah, they even have a Finnish sauna club there. Yeah. So, uh, Rob, and Robbie's put his uh, um, a guy with a Finnish log sauna in uh, Nagano. They, they do, they do. They did have sweat bathing culture though prior to uh, Finnish sound of boom uh, uh, alongside onsen. So I yeah. think it's probably not such a um, an alien concept 
um, but uh, I, I don't quite uh, know enough about um, uh, the differences and where the, the sort of newfound new kindled in, interest into finished sounds come from. But yeah, it's amazing to see it's, being embraced so much. It, I mean, it's a global thing. It's something we certainly see here in the UK. People are kind of having that awakening to, you know, okay, there's actually a really good way to, to make use of this experience that is really mm -hmm. enjoyable. And I think, you know, when you've, it's like anything, when you've done it right, when you've tried the real version of something, then mm -hmm. nothing else satisfies, nothing itches the spot, you know. Yeah, and sweat culture is a global thing. It is, yeah. If you have read uh, Mikhail Orland's book called yeah, Mikhail Orland. Sweat. Yeah. <laughs> He's busy making a film at the moment called uh, yeah, Perfect Sweat. Yeah, yeah. Serious, yeah. Yeah, so in that I think he goes and sees Hamam in Turkey, yeah, which is uh, like a steam room. Um, he goes to I think he goes to Norway for a, for a sauna there. Yeah, he's, he's been to there. Norway. Yeah, um, he's gone to Mesoamerica to see. I'm trying to think what they call them now. Tamas Tamasco. Tamasco Tamasco. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, uh, their sort of Mesoamerican sweat lodges. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and India sweat lodges. Native in America. Yeah. Yeah. North, North America. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, even in Europe, there uh, two thousand years ago, there's Roman baths and mm. and uh, associated yeah. sweat rooms and cold rooms that that come with those bathhouses. And also um, in the UK, there used to be like bathhouses. But yeah. Did they have? So sweat culture in a way. Um, I think the most of the bathhouses uh, stem from the Roman. Yeah. So era. so certainly, um, uh, Julius Caesar. It, it's difficult. Um, uh, historians and, and classical historians struggle to unpick sometimes what is what we would consider propaganda. So when when Julius Caesar is writing about the the Britons. He talks about them being uncivilized, unclean, barbaric. So they use this word "barbarian" to describe, no, you know, non-Roman style people, mm. and and the idea that everything that comes with the Roman Empire being the um, kind of domestication of of the wild people and bringing them into the empire, so that they, um, in many ways, are civil, become civilized. So. Mm. The, but what we find actually is that the the, the archaeology tells us, which is you know the, the material proof, that anywhere that has a uh, trading relationship into the Roman Empire is already before Julius Caesar turns up is already starting to adopt aspects of the culture. So you find things like Roman amphora, which the the pots that carry the things like olive oil mm -hmm. and wine, mm -hmm. you find those appear kind of before um, before Julius Caesar turns up, as you might expect. And we see things like mosaics and we see um, certain uh, building styles that um, are kind of uh, reminiscent of, um, of Roman culture. So I think the idea that actually the, the Iron Age inhabitants of the UK and of, of even France of Gaul um, the idea that these people were completely how we might say in a sort of cartoonish way barbarians you know mm. like almost like cavemen with clubs or something like that is actually you know a bit of Roman propaganda but I think the idea of having a communal bathing place which has rooms for sweating rooms for um, for cold therapy cold plunge um, we see quite a few of these in, in the Roman archaeology, the hypercourts, these raised floors, these heated, underfloor heated bathhouses. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that aspect of sweat bathing is, goes, back, um, goes back to the Romans. Um, I've heard reports, so there's a BBC News article about um, people believing that a sweat lodge was found near Stonehenge, so going back to the okay. Neolithic and Bronze Age mm -hmm. in the UK. Um, however, I think when you dig down into so anything sort of pre-Roman is pre-history, really, because we have only um, li 
literary reports from people who visited the UK. So we have like um, uh, the Phoenicians writing about visiting the Tin Isles, the island where there's some people, some nice people with that sell them tin to make bronze, um, which in Cornwall in the southwest of England is particularly, we used to have a lot of tin there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, so there's sort of these distant kind of, but no real actual reports because these are pre-literate um, cultures. Mm -hmm. um, and what we see is, is when you see a pile of stones that are all broken and fire and uh, carbon deposits around the stones, um, the uh, archaeologists start to think, well, this could be, this could be some sort of sweat lodge. Mm -hmm. um, and going back to the Mesolithic and Paleolithic, but mostly in, the, in sort of some of the Mesolithic settlements, in, which is uh, going back sort of, you know, over, over 12,000 years, um, you see these, they look like what you might think is a hut circle or a banked structure with some burnt, broken stones in the middle. And any culture at that time cooking or preparing food is going to be heating up stones to use for boiling or for, um, or, or for um, storing heat when they're cooking or for even standing their pots on um, if, they're, if they're at that point uh, having some ceramics, very basic ceramics. Um, but stones are really useful when you're trying to cook mm. in a fire anyway. So it's very difficult for us to tell the difference between um, what is essentially um, uh, the archaeological remains of just a standard cooking fire and, of course, what is the remains of somebody that made a big fire with lots of stones, then let the fire burn down, then put the tent over the fire mm. with maybe some banked sides, start pouring water on the stones, everybody has a sweat steam. So, we could be talking going back tens of thousands of years, maybe even longer than that as a as an experience. But in the UK, I mean, in the 1800s, people referred to British people as the great unwashed. So, <laughs> you know, we don't have the best hygiene reputation yeah. in Europe. That's certainly true. Uh, a lot of that has changed now. Mm -hmm. um, Victorian bathhouses. So there's some, there's some places in London that are old Victorian bathhouses. They existed, but a lot of that culture came from, you know, empire adoption of um, of things like Turkish bathhouses mm -hmm. and sort of looking to other cultures for, for adopting um, bathing cultures. We don't really have our own bathing culture, and I think that's why we've done so badly at appropriating other bathing cultures and why for so long sauna, as we call it here, mm -hmm. And I use it to define the experience that most people have here in their health clubs and gyms. Why that is such a poor appropriation of the proper Finnish sauna experience. I have a few, a few um, uh, theories about why we have this poor appropriation. Yeah, let's, let's hear them. <laughs> <laughs> so my first theory in, in the 70s, the, the Finns famously started exporting sauna as an international product. And we saw companies in the UK set up by Finns, importing Finnish equipment and saunas. And for a short while in the 70s, in the UK, there was a good sauna culture. And then things sort of started to change into the 80s. Um, at the same time, saunas, rather than saunas, saunas kind of became associated with these uh, slightly Germanized aspects, these erotic mm -hmm. saunas. And also, a lot of the Finns running those companies um, stopped running those companies and moved back to, to Finland or wherever they went or died out or whatever. Um, and the 80s saw a rise in homegrown sellers and distributors of, um, of sauna. And a lot of those were importing from, I shan't name names, but from uh, Swedish producers of mm -hmm. sauna equipment. Mm -hmm. And unlike the Finns who are 
notoriously humble and reserved about how you know about about everything but particularly <laughs> about the joy that is proper sauna and how to do it wow. and the swedes much were much more eager to disseminate information about how they believed was the right way to have a sauna obviously those in the know will know that what you have in sweden bastu is often sort of described as a slightly different experience and i've heard finns joking about bastus having carpet on the floor and mm, yeah. no, no stones no steam no steam no stones yeah. that you can read a newspaper in there and yeah. like a warm room rather than a than a sauna yeah that's correct yeah so um so during that period of 80s to 90s the swedes had a bit of a run on the sauna experience here in the uk and that led us to municipal pools and spas using Swedish companies' equipment and Swedish companies' uh, ideas for engineering saunas. Mm -hmm. And that became the norm because most people in the UK's first experience of a sauna is in a health club or a municipal sports center. And so what you had was saunas with a hidden heater without ventilation Maybe there is uh, very, very hot and dry, no water on the stones. Sometimes you see signs in the UK, do not pour water on the stones or you will break the heater or you will damage something. That's obviously, you and I know that's complete nonsense. Mm -hmm. And if it says that and it really means it, it's because either the heater's not wired properly or they have a rubbish heater that can't mm -hmm. take the, the water. So they, you know, if somebody, if you go in the UK to a sauna and it says, do not pour water on the stove or you will get electrocuted or the thing will break or whatever, they're doing it wrong. There's, you know, they're, they're, there's some, somewhere there's a corner being cut. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, those Swedes being there at the right place at the right time have disseminated this idea that a sauna is very hot, very dry, tolerated for 10 minutes after a workout mm -hmm. no ventilation if ventilation if you're lucky just goes poolside into a hot swimming pool area and you can't pour water and you can't make it humid mm -hmm. and sadly i think that platform the combination of erotic saunas which i think we inherit a little bit from the german um, uh, um, side of things and the Swedish saunas that we inherit from the large producers of equipment from Sweden has left us with this experience that actually we, you know, we speak to people who are like, oh, well, I don't like saunas. They're too hot. They're too dry. They, I feel like I can't breathe when I'm inside. And we're like, that's not, that you've got it wrong. You know, mm -hmm. that's like saying, uh, if you've never tried good wine and you say, oh, all wine is terrible, then, you know, you, you've just been jaded by your lack of a good experience. So that's my, that's only a theory, mm -hmm. um, a theory based on experience and on research, uh, but still, you mm -hmm. know, very much a theory. And I'm always happy to be proven wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but we're seeing now a huge revival and, you know, people, I guess a combination of um, in the noughties and uh, the teens that we experienced this period of time where there was a lot more free movement during the, the, the golden years of the European Union, uh, the free movement of people across, uh, across the continent and the sharing of ideas and, the, you know, the whole of Europe becoming more cosmopolitan and aware of the, the what was available what is available between um, different cultures um, and so we're seeing it with the guys down in Brighton that run Beachbox mm -hmm. Brighton mm -hmm. um, for example um, who are who are running sauna right down by the by the coast there um, we're seeing it with the Finnish um, sauna that was on top of the you mentioned you came across yeah, the South Bank or, Center. on the South Bank Center yeah, yeah. And slowly but surely, a combination of people trying it, 
either in Finland or getting the opportunity to here in the UK. Coupled with the positive research that's been coming out, a lot of which done by Dr. Jari Laukanen, mm -hmm. I think those two factors mean that we are now finally getting back to a proper sauna culture here in, in the UK. Um, yeah, and there's, well, I have to mention also the British Sauna Society. Of course. It's a sort of grassroot movement yes. so far, but it's building up. It and is. People are interested. And, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we had Mika Meskin on our last podcast, mm. who who's played a very important role um, in in sort of getting the British Sauna Society um, off, you know, off off to a good start. Um, and um, the, you can see their website there, British Sauna Society uh, .org .uk. And I think they have here some information as well about about the history of sauna. So. Mm -hmm. Tell us a bit about the Finnish history of sauna. About the, you know, I've talked about the archaeology of British sweat bathing. Um, how much do you know about the history of sauna beyond the last sort of 100, 200 years in Finland? Yeah, it was pretty cold when the Finns moved to where they live now. So at first place, people lived in a pit sort of. So they dug a pit, a pit somewhere. Yeah, the pit, sorry. Yeah, and of, they had some kind of fireplace there with the rocks, as you know, you described the Finnish or not. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> they had some kind of cover on it, mm -hmm. and that's how they survived the winter. Yeah, and perhaps they found out the sweat culture that way. Yeah, and that's even uh, eventually led to a log house when people knew how to how to build a log house and they had a similar stove inside the or a little bit more <laughs> like <laughs> how do you say it more sophisticated yeah. stove in, in the small in, in that log house and yeah that's how it evolved in Finland. So the oldest would be a, a sour sauna, a smoke sauna. Yeah, yeah. Or even the pit, perhaps. The pit sauna. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Excellent. So um, in terms of uh, historic saunas then, uh, you mentioned there's these kind of living museum kind of saunas. Is there one in particular that you think is a good illustration of, of an old traditional uh, rustic sauna experience? Uh, do you mean a museum? Uh, yeah, like a museum, like I don't know. <coughs> um, I've been to uh, like a Stone Age museum up in Oulu, a place called Kirki, mm -hmm. and there they have like a um, subterranean hut, like a pit sauna there, where they uh, heat the stones up outside first, and they take them down into the into mm -hmm. the pit and then you can pour water uh, on the stones in the pit. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything like that, those kind of experiences that... Yeah, there's uh, <clears throat> this collection of smoke saunas all of, from different parts of Finland. Mm -hmm. And it was a huge work for this architect called Christo Wolle mm -hmm. And uh, they were first assembled in, in Muurame, quite near Jyväskylä. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they were there quite a long time. And some, somehow they were unfortunately forgotten there. The city of Muurame didn't want to su support it and so So they got to a quite, to a quite, quite bad condition. Mm -hmm. But then there was a group that was interested in saving the sort of lifetime work of this architect. Yeah. And now, now they got them moved to the Juokslahti, that's in, near Jämsä. Mm -hmm. And there's actually, a, at the moment, there might be three that can be used already. Okay. And they're renovating the rest of, of the smoke saunas there. Excellent. Yes. So that's in Jämsä. 
Yeah, that's mm. the answer. Yeah. yeah. And you can be the guide for the, the of the sauna. Okay. You can pick from well there's Finnish sauna society has a few saunas there and then uh at least the uh, the sauna Mr. Kilpa has one. Okay. But there's quite a many many left. So if you Finnmark wants to invest <laughs> a couple of thousand <laughs> euros. We can so